Greetings, good to see you once again. It's uh, a little bit of a, a cloudy day here, but uh, it's nice to see you all the same. Uh, recently, we've been going through a series of videos about uh, the hedge dog bot and trying to find value with dutching and hedging of uh, greyhounds and hopefully turn a profit in the process. Uh, we've been through a number of uh, different uh, combinations of strategies to try and there's a few results to wrap up from the most recent video. Uh, so let's have a look at that. Right here, so here we are, we can see the hedge dog bot and I've been tracking uh, results in a spreadsheet. Uh, in the last video, we were going to leave it running uh, for a few days uh, on just Australia and the uh, New Zealand with uh, six, seven and eight runners and looking at uh, dutching the outsiders in those races and hedging on the favorite. Uh, I'd have to say the results, as you can see here, the one that looked like it might actually be reasonable was the eight runner option. Uh, so in that case, uh, a hedge on the favorite, dutching the fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth uh, favorites. So touching the real outsiders there, and that seemed to work reasonably well. There was one day there that didn't, but uh, other days worked reasonably well. And I suspect that was mainly because at those uh, placings you tend to get some, some very high odds. So you can uh, see some some 50, 60, 70 uh, dollar odds on some of those runners that end up winning. And you get a handful of those in a day, and it really helps the system uh, to, to take off quite nicely. So I ran that for a few days. I, I did like the eight runner one. I wasn't particularly keen on the results from the seven runners. As you can see, three rather bad down days with just one good day. And the six runners was more or less breaking even most of the time, so it didn't really seem to be worth it. But the, the higher odds available when you've got uh, a seventh and, and eighth in particular uh, favorite does tend to help that system a bit. Now, Doug left a comment on my blog in response to the last video, suggesting that we might actually be better off just looking at the fourth and fifth uh, greyhounds in the uh, race. So, had a look at that. Now, Doug uh, corresponded with a few times. He's fairly knowledgeable, so it was certainly worth investigating as an option, and uh, let's see those results. So Doug's suggestion uh, of looking at touching the fourth and fifth favourites, um, ran that for a few days as well, and the results um, on the eight runners, it was it was pretty much a wipeout, uh, but the seven runners looked like it was reasonably positive. Uh, it had one particularly good day in there, uh, one that was just just squeaking in, and the others were only down little bits. So overall, that one seemed to show some promise. The six runners tended to be pretty much break even most of the time, uh, or just just going down, coming back up, or going up and coming back down. It didn't really seem to be doing much of anything. Uh, so the seven runners seemed to be the uh, highlight of that. So after all of that, I picked a few systems that I liked the look of from those days, and I've been running those uh, for a few days. So they've uh, been interestingly mixed. One of them has done really well. Not all of them, though. So after all of that, uh, I came to the conclusion that there were three systems that I liked the uh, look of in particular. Um, I didn't like much out of this original attempt at just doing the first, second, or the second, third, or the third, fourth, uh, as just straight uh, dutching. Um, the systems of uh, just doing the outsiders without a hedge on the favorite, not particularly enamored with that. Adding the hedge seemed to uh, produce something useful at least. So what I did particularly like was this one here with five runners in the UK. Uh, that's, yeah, that's highlighting more than I want because I've merged some cells, but, but uh, down here, the five runners in the UK, uh, we're looking at um, 
Dutching the fourth and fifth, and a hedge on the favourite. That had a reasonable number of positive days overall. Uh, so we have a look in um, the hedge dog bot. That's set up uh, like this. So we've got a hedge on the favourite. As long as there's odds of between 1 and 100, I don't particularly mind what the odds are. I'm willing to book a 10% loss if the favourite wins. However, generally speaking, it usually makes a couple cents at least if the favourite wins. So the favourite wins, you still make a very small profit. The fourth and fifth favourites, um, they're then being dutched, and we're looking to make at least 25% profit if one of those wins. If the bot can't meet those requirements, it won't place a bet in that um, in that race. Now, we're looking at, with all of these, I've been doing uh, $5,000 uh, as a minimum stake, uh, minimum match, sorry, not minimum, I'm certainly not staking $5,000 per race, good heavens. Uh, no, minimum matched is $5,000. Um, and I've got uh, the country, well, I've got the, the meeting selected as just the UK meeting, so I've unticked all of the Australian ones, and when the bot next reloaded, it's just made them disappear, uh, all the New Zealand ones out of here as well. Uh, now, the bot does remember which markets you've unticked, so the Australian New Zealand markets that I've unticked will not come back into the back one tab, which is where I have the UK system set up, uh, until I restart the bot. If I close and reopen it, they will come back and I'll have to untick them again. Now looking at other systems I like the look of, and we've got uh, for Australia New Zealand, so we're in back two here, uh, seven runners, hedging the favourite, dutching the fourth and fifth. If we just uh, look at the results of that for a moment, uh, you can see here it had one particularly good day during testing, and one day that just scraped over the line, and only fairly small losses in comparison on other days. So it showed promise, and I thought that was certainly worth going on with. Um, the other system that I particularly liked the look of was the uh, Australia-New Zealand eight runners looking at the fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth, as you can see here. And that's set up in the bot as well. We can see a hedge on the favourite and dutching the 5th, 6th, 7th, and 8th. So how have they been going since I got them out of testing and into ongoing work? Well, interesting mixed bag here. Australia New Zealand is definitely the highlight of the bunch. Now, I didn't have it set up correctly for the first day, so I didn't actually place any bets, but then a loss on the next day and a quite healthy gain overnight. And if we look at the bot right now, that system is in a dollar six of profit, which is good. That's uh, since this morning. So it was just the morning session, which uh, there was only one meeting in Australia this morning. That was at Richmond. So one dollar and six out of one meeting. The other systems, well, they're not going gangbusters at the moment, but uh, we'll see if the I'm going to see if the previous form on them uh, turns out to be true or not. Um, now, I did originally want to do this as something to demonstrate a possibility for level staking. Uh, I've, I'm doing this with with a multiplier if there's uh, if there's a down day. Um, you could do, equally do it with with level staking, and in fact, this one here would have been a profit with level staking anyway. And these would have smaller losses if I was level staking. And so you know, maybe it would be easier for them to recover. Maybe the escalation here does help them recover. I'll have to wait and see. But I'm at least happy with uh, the Australia New Zealand 8 runner system and uh, hopeful that the others will come back to the form that they were showing previously. Um, and we'll see where they go from there. Well, given more time, uh, it may very well turn out that these systems do work. Certainly, there's plenty of opportunities for finding value and, and finding profit in the hedging and dutching of greyhounds. 
I do suspect to an extent that it may be better doing this manually rather than leaving it in auto mode. Not to say it can't be done in auto mode, certainly there are times where it works reasonably well, but I think a more targeted approach would probably provide better results. So that said, if you're happy with uh, the results from the automated way of doing it, well that's fine too, but of course Hedge Dog Bot can be run in a manual mode to uh, look for these opportunities. So if you have runners in, in races that you particularly fancy, well, you can certainly uh, look at finding some value hedging and dutching those in the bot. So that might be a, uh, a more lucrative way of doing it. And certainly when you see some of those races have really, really good results and others are a little bit mediocre, if you have a selection system that can cut out some of those more mediocre races, well, maybe manual betting is, is just the way to go on that. Anyway, next video will be about something somewhat different to this. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this uh, little series on hedging and dutching greyhounds. Certainly, I had hoped to find something for those of you who like to do level staking as opposed to progressive staking. Maybe we've found something for you, maybe we haven't. But uh, certainly, uh, I think the next video, uh, when, when it comes out, uh, hopefully in the next few days, uh, although maybe sometime later in the week, uh, that I think should have something that everyone will enjoy. Uh, until then, happy punting and uh, see you soon.